Gotten from our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost.
Here begins the 43rd chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes, and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Bring out the people who are blind, yet have eyes, who are deaf, yet have ears. All the nations gather together, and the peoples assembly. Who among them can declare this? and show us the former things. Let them bring their witnesses to prove them right, and let them hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Here ends the first lesson.
here beginneth the ninth verse of the first chapter of the Revelation to St. John the Divine. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom, and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash round his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow, his eyes were like a flame of fire, his feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are, and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Here endeth the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, we chart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. Save the King. And bless you, we hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness. And give us the city of the joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is no Clean our hearts within us. And take not the Holy Spirit from us. O oh God, for as much as without thee we are not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Light on our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for his all holiness, ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew. O God, the pastor and ruler of thy holy church, look down in mercy upon thy servant Bartholomew, ecumenical patriarch, to whom thou hast given rule over thy church, and so direct and defend him by thy grace, that he may, by word and good example, lead the flock of Christ committed to him 
in the ways of truth and love, holiness and peace, through him who is the Good Shepherd, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for Archbishop Nikitas and the Holy Archdiocese of Thyatira and Great Britain in this their centenary year. O merciful Father, who wouldest not that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, strengthen, we humbly beseech thee, the hands of those who are laboring for the extension of thy kingdom in the Holy Archdiocese of Thyatira and Great Britain. Endow thy servant Nikitas and all bishops and clergy in his charge with the needful grace, wisdom, and health for their work. Give to them and to all who work in their parishes courage and faithfulness to persevere amidst all difficulties. Stir up the zeal and love of many that they may offer themselves for some work in thy service and grant that all, both clergy and laity, may labor with a single eye to thy glory and in the spirit of love and self-sacrifice. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us pray for the unity of God's holy church. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications for all men, we humbly beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all God's priests, and people. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
on behalf of His Grace the Archbishop of Canterbury and all of us present, it's my enormous privilege to welcome your All Holiness and your entourage to this parish church of St James Sussex Gardens in Paddington for Evensong this evening. Your All Holiness, your Eminences, your Graces, fathers, brothers and sisters in Christ, it is with immense joy that we gather together to worship our God and Saviour in this evening office on this occasion. And it's very fitting that our worship has just concluded, or nearly concluded, with that translation by one of our great Oxford Movement fathers, John Keeble, of the words of the ancient Greek evening hymn, Fossilaron, which we were pleased to hear when, on Friday evening, your Old Holiness extended your great hospitality to us at the service of Vespers in the parish of St Nectarios uh, in South London. On this occasion, as we have heard this evening, we are celebrating the centenary, 100 years, of the Archdiocese of Thyatira and Great Britain. And so it is a particular pleasure as well to, to welcome His Eminence, Archbishop Nikitas, and to thank him for his partnership in the Gospel with us, with the Church of England, and with many other Christians in London and throughout the country. Your All Holiness, we are honoured that you have come this evening to share with us in this act of worship. I believe yesterday you celebrated 31 years seated on the throne of the Ecumenical Patriarch, and it is a remarkable achievement to have held this office in the Church for so long. We thank you for your wise, spiritual and pastoral leadership, not only for the churches of the Orthodox family, but also for Christians of every tradition and denomination in this country and throughout the world. In these times of great peril and challenge for Christians and for all people worldwide, it is marvellous to be able to come together and to thank you for all that you have been able to offer by way of leadership in our Lord's name over these three decades and more. And we greet you warmly and fraternally in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we pray that the rest of your visit uh, to London to mark this centenary will be full of joy and deep fellowship in the Lord. And when the time comes on Monday or Tuesday, I believe, we wish you safe passage back to the Fanar and to the world centre of Orthodox Christianity in Istanbul, Constantinople. I'd like now, if I may, to uh, descend from this uh, slightly loftier place and to present you, Your Royal Holiness, with a small gift uh, marking uh, this, your visit, and expressing our gratitude to you. Uh, the gift, which I will explain from up here, is uh, an office book. That is to say, it contains the texts of uh, the services from our English prayer book, together with uh, hymns and prayers and propers appointed for our festivals, seasons and saints' days. And we hope you will take it home with you uh, with our love and prayers and as a little example, a little treasury of the worship of the English Church, the Church of England, in which you have been graciously pleased to share this evening and, and uh, by which you have honoured us with your presence. Lord Bishop of Fulham, Right Reverend Jonathan Baker, 
Your Eminences, Your Graces, Reverend Fathers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, glorifying the God of our fathers and thanking him for the countless blessings that he has bestowed upon us, we bring you our humble greetings from the Church of Constantinople, being most appreciative that you have invited us to be with you during this evening's prayer service in this beautiful church as we continue our patriarchal visit to the United Kingdom, commemorating the centennial of our Archdiocese of Theatira and Great Britain. Considering the Holy Temple's proximity to the Archdiocesan headquarters at Theatira House, we note that you are good neighbors and recognize the Abrahamic hospitality that your parish has extended to us this evening and that the Church of England in general has shown to our faithful, especially here in London, for many years. While many Greek Orthodox Christians had already been moving to the British Isles for centuries, primarily for economic and trade opportunities, our ecumenical throne formally established the local eparchy 100 years ago under challenging conditions for the Mother Church of Constantinople during a period when over one million refugees were forced to leave their, their native lands, Asia Minor, Eastern Thrace. While the Ecumenical Patriarchate so faithful leave our country and region, a historical cradle of Christianity from the era of the New Testament, at the same time, efforts were made to ensure that the Holy Grail Church of Christ provided much needed spiritual care to those immigrating to Western and Central Europe. Today, especially in light of the complex political and economic conditions throughout Europe, our Archdiocese continues its mission by ministering the orth to Orthodox Christians, not only to those originating from Greece, Cyprus, Eastern Europe, and elsewhere, but also by providing support for the local less fortunate, regardless of religious confession. After all, this is what Christ commanded us to do when saying that all will know that you are his disciples, my disciples, if we have, if you have love for one another. Naturally, especially during the initial years when the Orthodox lacked the necessary organization and resources, the Church of England, your church, dear brother, despite its own various tribulations and challenges, offered highly valued assistance and support, such as providing many houses of worship. We are sincerely grateful for these thoughtful initiatives and gestures, which have also certainly encouraged the progress of the bilateral dialogue and cooperation between Anglicans and Orthodox on a local and international level. These first acquaintances and concrete interactions here were among the initial influences that led the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople to be a trailblazer and active participant in the ecumenical movement since the beginning 
of the previous century. This is evident by the patriarchal and synodal encyclical of 1920, entitled Unto the Churches of Christ Everywhere, which provided a framework and suggestions for inter-Christian dialogue and emphasized the importance that we place on it, not only between Christians, but with other faiths and all people of goodwill. As witnessed by the meetings of the International Commission for Anglican Orthodox Theological Dialogue, such as the one that took place only a few weeks ago in Athens under the co-chairmanship of His Eminence Metropolitan Athenagoras of Belgium, who is part of our honorable entourage here in London, we remain convinced that our dedication to an honest exchange of ideas assists in healing past wounds and misunderstandings. While we may not see eye to eye on every issue, we look to find common ground on subjects <coughs> that we can agree on uh, so that we can raise a much sought after united Christian voice to address contemporary problems to speak against social and environmental injustices, to call for peace and reconciliation unceasingly, and to stand up for our shared Christian values in an increasingly secularized world. Therefore, it is with these thoughts that we leave you with this evening looking forward to the continued collaboration and mutual support that you will enjoy and continue to cultivate with the Archdiocese of Thyatira as it officially moves into its second century here in Great Britain. Furthermore, never remaining complacent or overly proud in charitable works, we congratulate you for your various accomplishments as followers of Jesus Christ and the teachings of the Holy Gospel, and encourage you to continue and strengthen the manifold ministries of this parish that offer much for the betterment of society. May the blessing of the Lord and His mercy come upon you by his divine grace and love for mankind always, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you. Lord. I have also a phrase to this is a writer of our Lord, and of Rata. And uh, yeah, pectoral cross for your excellence. Holiness in thanking you for uh, your words and in thanking you um, very much uh, for these gifts and for this pectoral cross which I wear with great uh, pride and humility at the same time. I wonder if by way of conclusion I might in invite you to join with me in blessing the people before we depart. Unto the Lord's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this night and always. Amen. 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 Have a nice evening. <laughs> <laughs>